Hello my friends and welcome to Practice English with Paul. Today is an interesting video. It's called 5 Tips to Know When Your Teacher Is Weak. I know that doesn't sound very nice and um, maybe you're thinking why am I doing this video. It's because many of you have been sending me private messages because some of you have got private teachers or you go to language schools and you feel that something is missing from the lesson. Uh, maybe it's something uh, to do with your teacher. And you've asked me to make a video on how to recognize if a teacher should maybe be working a little bit more to support your English development. So here are my top tips. Number one, if your teacher is working from one source, so like just one textbook, every lesson in a language school or privately, that is a little bit worrying because textbooks are okay, but the practice is often not enough, uh, especially in things like English File Cutting Edge. Not bad books at all. The grammar practice is tiny. You need other material. You need maybe uh, some specialized reading material from online sources or something. So if you only have one source, be worried. Okay? Number two, the teacher should have a plan. Of course, that sounds obvious, but very often, it's very easy for teachers to go to the teacher's room in their language school or before they meet you privately to photocopy random material that has no relevance to your language development. I've seen that many times. I really, really, really have. The plan is like, if you go to a language school, the teacher understands in six months, I need to make sure that you have completed intermediate level. Your grammar should be here. You should know this vocabulary. Your speaking and listening and reading skills should be better. If you have a private teacher and maybe you need job interview English, they should have a plan for you. So over one month, I'm going to make you uh, respond well to interview questions. I will teach you buzzwords. I will teach you how to respond properly. You need a plan. So if you feel your teacher just gives you random material every lesson, that's not a good sign. Number three. This is an interesting one, and I hope some teachers online will not kill me for this, so I will word it very carefully. Playing only games. Now, many teachers like to play games with students. Um, I like to differentiate between the words activities and games. This is my interpretation, okay? It's my personal one. Activities are kind of games relevant to a language point. So if you're doing passive, after you've gone through the grammar of passive, the teacher will do some written activities, uh, some speaking activities to practice the passive language. Um, in my experience, I have seen some teachers play games for the wrong reasons. What do I mean by for the wrong reasons? Maybe they don't know how to explain grammar very well. So playing games is a way to avoid doing that. Okay. So if you feel that your teacher is just constantly playing games with you. Maybe it's fun, um, but if you feel that it's not relevant and your progress is slow, it's a bit worrying. Of course, we want to do some fun activities, make the learning environment uh, like a pleasure. Of course, it's fine, but not constantly, okay? We do need to do hard work and we need to push our students, especially if you are paying a lot of money, okay? Um, again, with the games, if you have children who are with, say, a native speaker or anyone, um, is I've, I've seen teachers who give worksheets like here are numbers, one to ten, let's colour them in. Why would you do that in an English lesson? You can do that at home if you had to, but that's just completely not relevant. Or if maybe a teacher gives a class a crossword, okay, the crosswords are nice, but is it relevant to what you're doing? If yes, okay. If no, Again, be careful with this, okay? Be careful. You always have your eyes open. If you think that you're playing too much and progress is slow, say something. Number four, chatting all lesson. Um, let's be careful here. Uh, if you are in a conversation class, you will chat for most of the lesson, but it should be based around some language points, some themes, some grammar, some vocab, something. If a teacher comes into your class and sits down and says, let's talk about what you did at the weekend. Let's talk about something in the news. And you feel as a student that there's no plan to this. It's because the teacher hasn't planned. And unfortunately, I have seen this sometimes, not often, but sometimes. Native speakers think because we hold the language, 
we can rely on just speaking English. So if we're late for a lesson, we can just talk to the students. If that happens very often, you should be worried. Number five, um, this is something I really can't stand. You might often hear, it sounds right. Now, if you have a teacher and you ask them questions about grammar, vocabulary, blah, 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 and they always say, it sounds right, it sounds right, it sounds right, you should be worried because it means the teacher doesn't know their subject very well. Now, when it comes to collocations and certain words, of course we need to say that well, it sounds right. Um, but for grammar, there is often an answer for something. If the teacher doesn't know the answer to a grammar point, then they should say to you, well, I don't know, but I will find out for next lesson, and they should tell you next lesson. It's very, very important. Um, so, of course, for collocations, yes, you will uh, hear sometimes it sounds right, but if it's very, very often, it's not a good sign, okay? Because we as teachers continually learn and develop. I spend so much time just reading grammar books for fun. That's how, how fun my life is. My friends, I hope that was useful for you, and I thank you so much uh, asking me to do this video because um, it's very interesting for me to think about it. And so many of you have written very positive comments, and you know you really keep me on my toes, and I'm very, very thankful for that. So, my friends, I wish you a wonderful day. Please subscribe, please like my videos, and write your comments below, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.